Hello everyone and welcome to optimization and control tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of optimization, mathematics, controls and dynamics. In this tutorial you will learn how to solve optimization problems in C or C++ by using open source and free NLOPT library. NLOPT is a free and open source library for nonlinear optimization in C or C++. It's very simple to use and it's relatively well documented. It supports both local and global optimization methods. It also contains algorithms that are derivative free. The main motivation for creating this video tutorial comes from the following facts. Namely, if you want to implement a more advanced control or estimation algorithms such as model predictive control or moving horizon estimation, you will most likely need to use advanced optimization techniques. Furthermore, you will need to use C or C++ programming language since you want to implement these algorithms in hardware. Now, the problem is that a large number of nonlinear optimization libraries and algorithms are not open source and they are not free. And consequently, if you want to develop a new product or a prototype, you would have to buy an expensive license. So the question is, is there a relatively cheap or even better open source and free nonlinear optimization libraries written in C and C++ that you can easily install and easily use to test your control algorithm? And the answer is yes. The name of this library is Analopt library. I tested this library and my conclusion is that this is a very solid library for developing advanced model-based control algorithms. But before I start, I would like to mention a few things. Those of you who are my subscribers or who follow my channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains all the explanations and all the codes. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and this video tutorial. And I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Before I start, here is another important comment. As you can observe over here, I'm using a Windows machine. However, I compiled an Alopt library in Linux. That is in this Ubuntu distribution that you can see over here. And I'm running at the same time Windows and Ubuntu by using Windows subsystem for Linux. It's not difficult to install Windows subsystem for Linux and the advantage is that you can have a Linux command line and at the same time you can also use Windows. I'm using the Linux environment simply because I was not able to install this library in Windows environment. However, the installation process of this library in Linux is very easy and straightforward. I will make a video on how to install the Analopt library in Linux. This will be my next tutorial. To explain how to use the Analopt library, I'm considering this optimization problem. I'm minimizing the quadratic cost function with respect to the decision variables x1 and x2. The decision variables are also called the optimization variables. In addition, I have two constraints. x1 should be in the interval from minus 5 to 5 and similarly x2 should be in the interval from minus 5 to 5. Obviously, this is a convex optimization problem with a global minimum located at 2 and 3. And I deliberately constructed this example for which I know the global solution. In this way, I can test the optimization solver and I can see how accurately it solves the problem. Of course, I can specify a very complex function over here. However, then 
I cannot debug the solution. I don't know if my solver accurately or inaccurately solved the optimization problem. That's why when you are learning something and when you are testing an optimization solver, solver it's always a good practice to start with a toy example that you can see over here. Okay, so let's start with coding. The first step is to open a Linux terminal. In my case, the terminal is already opened and under the assumption that you have already installed the NLOPT library, we can create a source file. I will create a source file by using the gedit Linux editor. However, you can also use other Linux editors installed on your system. The name of the file will be source file one. And don't forget the extension C. I have to mention that this video tutorial is based on C implementation of the NLOPT library. However, there is also a C++ implementation of NLOPT library that I will explain in my next video. The first step is to import the necessary header files. We will use three header files in this video. And these header files are mat.h, stdio.h. These are basically the standard C header files. And this is a new header file. It's called nlopt.h. This is the nlopt library header file containing definition declarations and prototypes of functions and of other objects and constants that are used by this library. The next step is to define the cost function and the gradient of the cost function. Here is the mathematical form of the cost function with the constraint. To define the cost function, we actually need to define a C function and the definition is got given over here. The name of the function in my case is cost function. However, this name is arbitrary. You can give it any name you like. Following the NLOPT convention, this function has to accept one, two, three, four input arguments. The first input argument is the dimension of the problem. In our case, the dimension is equal to two since we have two optimization variables. The second input argument is this pointer over here. And this pointer is actually a pointer to an array that stores the optimization variable. That is, for given array storing the optimization variables x1 and x2, this cost function will compute the value of this cost over here, that is, the value of this quadratic cost, and it will return this value, as you can see over here. The second input argument is a pointer to an array storing the gradient. And we will fill in this gradient over here in our code. And the fourth argument is not important for the time being, and I will not use it. Advanced users need to learn how to use this fourth argument. For example, this fourth argument can store the parameters of the cost function. This function performs the following steps. If this pointer grad is not a null pointer, then the function will compute the gradient at the current value of the optimization variable. That is, it will fill this array grad with values. We can simply compute the gradient of this cost function and we have the add partial derivative of this cost function with respect to x1 is nothing less than 2 times x1 minus 2. And over here you can exactly see that term. The partial derivative of this cost function with respect to x2 is 2 times x2 minus 3. And notice over here that since c is indexing arrays from 0, we have one over here. However, in reality, this x1 corresponds to x2 and x0 corresponds to x1. Then, 
we need to return the cost function value and we simply compute the value of the cost function over here and return that value. Next, let us define our main function. Okay, so here is our main function. The next step is to define the constraints. We only have lower and upper bounds on the optimization variables, so our constraints will, will be very simple. The constraints can be simply defined by defining two arrays of doubles. LB stands for lower bounds and UB stands for the upper bounds. And the lower bounds and the upper bounds, as we can see from our mathematical form of the cost functions, are minus 5, minus 5. That is, this first entry is the lower bound for x1, the second entry is the lo lower bound for x2, and similarly over here 5 is the upper bound for x1 and 5 is the upper bound for x2. Okay, that was super easy. Next, let us create, or better to say initialize, our optimization problem. We can initialize our optimization problem by using these two code lines. For clarity, these two code lines are also given over here. The library analopt is centered around this object. This is an opaque pointer type. We pass this pointer to subsequent functions to set the optimization parameters such as algorithm, dimension, constraints, objective functions, topic tolerances, etc. We create this object by using this declaration. So opt is of the typed analopt underscore opt. And over here, we basically allocate a new analopt opt object. The first argument of this function analopt create is the algorithm. And the second arg argument is the dimension of the problem. Analopt LD MMA is the name of the optimization algorithm. Analopt is a standard string. L means that the optimization algor algorithm is local. D means that the algorithm is based on derivatives. And MMA is the name of the algorithm, method of moving asymptotes. And this method is given in this SIAM paper. The second argument is the dimension of the problem. n is equal to 2. This is because we have two optimization variables, x1 and x2. Next, we need to link our lower upper bounds as well as our cost function with this optimization problem over here. And we can do that by using these three code lines. This function, n lopped set lower bounds, links the lower bound array with our optimization problem. The first argument is this pointer of the optimization problem and the second argument is the pointer to the array defining the lower bound. Similarly, we link the upper bound to our optimization problem by using the function nlopt set upper bounds. Next, we need to link our cost function to our optimization problem. And we are using this function analopt set min objective. We specify the pointer of our optimization problem. We specify the cost function. And over here, I use null pointer. And this null pointer actually corresponds to this data structure. Since we are not using void data structure, this is a null pointer. Next, we need to define the tolerances, the initial condition, and finally to solve the optimization problem. This can be achieved by using these code lines. Here we set the optimization tolerances. Over here we set the initial guess. I'm assuming that my optimization will start from this vector over here, that is x1 will be equal to 0 and x2 will be equal to 0. And notice over here that these two values are stored in the vector, or better to say array x. Then 
This variable of type double will be used to store the final value of the cost function. Then over here, I solve my optimization problem. The first input argument is a pointer to my optimization problem. The second input argument is the vector or better to say array of initial guesses. And over here, I pass as a reference this variable over here that will store the final value of the cost function. This function will solve the optimization problem and the result will be stored in this pointer that points to the array that actually stores the results. Over here, I have a simple if-else statement. Basically, this if-else statement will print that optimization process failed if the result returned by this function is smaller than zero. That is, this function returns a value smaller than zero if we encountered some problem during the optimization. Other, otherwise, it will return a positive value. So if this function returns a positive value, that is, if result is positive, this means that we have solved our optimization problem and we've print the results, that is, we print this array x and minf that stores the minimum value. The, the next step function. is to save the file. We can do that by clicking over here. Then we need to close this editor and let's see our new file. Here it is, source file 1.c. The next step is to compile this file. We can compile this file by using this command line over here. We are calling the compiler. The compiler is cc. Here's the name of the source file, source file 1.c. These two parameters you should not change. These two parameters are basically telling to Linux that we are using the header and the library file stored at the standard locations and over here is the name of our output or executable file. You can call this solution, for example, optimization. Okay, let's run enter and let's see if everything is fine. Everything is fine. There are no compilation errors. So we can execute this file. However, before we do that, let's see the new file. Here it is, solution optimization. This is our executable file. So let's execute this file by just calling it. We are calling this file with these two symbols, or better to say dot and this slash line. And let's see the result. Okay, so here's the result found minimum at f2,3. This means that the minimum is found at the position x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to 3. And by comparing this result with our cost function that's given over here, we can obviously see that the solver was able to find the exact solution that's located at 2 and 3. And the minimum of this cost function is obviously zero. And going back to our code, we can see that the value of the cost function for these two results is at 10 to the minus 16 order, which is very close to the zero. That is, this is a machine precision. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.